Tesla breaks the unbreakable. Shares are falling after a disastrous reveal of its latest vehicle. It's called the Cybertruck, an electric pickup meant to compete with the Ford F-150 and perform like a Porsche. All opinions on the aesthetics aside, things started to go wrong when Tesla tried to prove the truck's windows were made of, quote, unbreakable glass. Oh, my God. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. <laughs> Should we try it <laughs> and Claire Sebastian is at the magic wall for us. It's a good job right. Elon's reaction was beeped out there because um, you heard his naughty laugh. That wasn't meant to happen. It was not meant to happen. This yeah. vehicle, the whole point is being marketed as something that was indestructible. Now, in his defence, it did survive a uh, sledgehammer to the side of it in that same presentation. So clearly the alloy that's used to make this vehicle, which is the same as they're using in the Starship at SpaceX, apparently, uh, is indestructible. But it's interesting looking at the car itself because... It's ugly. It's, it's you can say it. It's pretty it's, ugly. It's ugly. It's not like your usual pickup, but there are elements in the spec studio that, that are designed to appeal to pickup drivers. There's a, a towing limit of about fourteen thousand pounds, which is really competitive for the most expensive model. The payload, you can see, they specially build a an ATV, a sort of a quad bike, to, to show that it can carry three and a half thousand pounds. But it also is designed to appeal to the kind of the die-hard Tesla supercar lover. Not to sixty, apparently. 2.9 seconds. Yeah, now you make a great point there. I do think this appeals to the hardcore yeah. Tesla yeah. fans. I'm not sure your ordinary contractor that's going about his business is going to potentially purchase this. Talk about price. Well, and the price of the car, 39, it starts at 39,000, goes up to about 69,000. Which so is competitive. It's competitive. That yeah. is a mass market price. That competes with the likes of the Ford F-150. But I don't think the market is seeing it as a mass market car. Look at the share that price today. That was a perfect today. circle, by the way. Yes. I saw that. The, uh, the, the market does not see this as a mass market market yeah. card they're seeing this this isn't really about the broken glass this is about the missed opportunity when it comes to the pickup market in the US which is about 18% uh, of all car sales in this country the top three cars are all pickups yeah, I want to get excited about that down 6% or 6.4% but it, whoa boy it's had one heck of a run-up right. right this okay. is it right here we have the last earnings right. report um, <laughs> let's just circle that so everyone can see it that was where they posted a profit which was a surprise since then they've rallied about 30% they're still up about 30% uh, even with the fall today since that they're up about 50% in the last three months to it about flat for the year performing slightly less well than the rivals GM uh, and Ford over the year uh, but still it's been quite a run-up and we are seeing some price targets being raised today even with this blunder so even with right. the non bulletproof bulletproof yeah. glass a lot of uh, humor let's call it on the internet over just what this truck is people are raising their price targets. yeah I think it's fair to say it's not just uh, it's not just Wall Street that's going to call today <laughs> they were actually trolled by another company wow Vodafone, Vodafone UK. yeah Vodafone UK so they are launching this is this is clearly a joke the cyber phone they've got a cross by the shockproof glass you can see they've mimicked the uh, the, the Tesla the, the, shatter yeah. there. But there are various other comparisons out there. There's more than we can possibly include. The, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> angular... Futuristic-looking teapot. Coffee <laughs> what else do we have? This is great. We've so, got the dump oh, truck. Oh, yeah. now that's flattering. <laughs> it, it reminded me of a mouse, like the old Apple mouse, or even a piece of cheese, actually, <laughs> when you first saw it. I was like, maybe I'm just being a girl about this. If you're a oh. Star Wars fan. Oh, wow. The Mandalorian. Getting, getting into the Mandalorian. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Elon, how do we think he reaction about this? He certainly, he certainly got a lot of reaction. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The PR on this yeah, exactly. one, not bad. How interesting. Claire Sebastian, thank you so much for a wrap-up of a, an interesting day for <laughs> Elon Musk. That's all I can say. Now, Elon Musk makes bold claims about colonising Mars, about connecting our brains to computers and revolutionising transportation. That aside, the expectations, though, don't always match the reality. Let me take you through this. For instance, Musk promised this was Tesla's truck that was, in his own words, literally bulletproof. Then, of course, the windows were smashed with relative ease. Now, Musk casts himself as a visionary CEO CEO, and while many might agree, it's actually his erratic behaviour that often makes the headlines. For example, if you remember, he smoked marijuana on a podcast next month. He'll actually stand trial for calling a rescue diver a paedophile. Last year, Musk said he might take Tesla private, funding secured. Do you remember that? He tweeted that. And then the share price soared. In reality, he got slapped with a fraud charge from the SEC, the funding had not been secured, and Tesla remains a public company. All right, let's talk this through. Daniel Ives is the Managing Director of Equity Research at Wedbush Securities. Great to have you with us, Dan. Good to be here. What do you make of the Cybertruck? 
I mean, look, I think in terms of the launch, it was really a black eye for Musk and Tesla. I mean, these launch events are so key for Tesla. And I think if you look at the design, look, I mean, even though it's more of a Mad Max Blade Runner, I think very limited in sort of niche opportunity from market. The Wall Street's disappointed because this was viewed as a potential market opportunity and instead I think they tripped over their shoes. I mean, we're, we're joking about it. On first move this morning, I, I said, is it a bird or is it a plane? I mean, you're pretty clear. You say it's a stealth bomber. As far as you're concerned, this bombed. And it's a huge and very lucrative part of the market, to your point. Yeah, there was a drum roll for this, really, for the last year about pickup. Think about 3 million units in the U.S. F-150 sells about 1 million you know, per year. So th there was an opportunity here. But then fundamentally, what you're starting to see here is that it was disappointing because now I think Wall Street basically says, could this even do 75 to 100K per year? And I think if you look at the launch event, you know, definitely what I would view as a debacle. What about pricing here? And is it just the aesthetics here? Because we were just making the point, Claire and I, that um, maybe this appeals to Tesla enthusiasts. But what about price? Because the starting price of this is lower than what we see on the market. And you've got some pretty steep competition, whether it's Ford, whether it's GM, Rivian, of course. Yeah. That's and, another one. And Rivian's 69,000. But here, the base model is also a little deceiving because I think most with additions and specs could be called 50 to 55,000, no doubt cheaper. And that's something that will appeal to a, a certain, you know, core to loyal Tesla base. But ultimately, it comes down to it was cheaper, but it comes down to the design. And I think when you look at it, it almost looks like a bad sci-fi project. A bad sci-fi project. Not what he was expecting. I mean, he was laughing when that, uh, when that glass was damaged there, perhaps not laughing. You say, if we, in terms of demand, what we're looking at here, 150,000 to 175,000 units for the first full year of delivery. So we're talking likely 2022. And that's kind of the line in the sand here. If they don't achieve that, um, yeah, I view that as sort of a bull case, and, and I view that as extremely difficult because realistically, it could be half that in terms of what we're looking at as an opportunity. And I can tell you from investors, investors really right now are sort of writing this off as they thought this could be called a double or a triple from a baseball analogy, and instead it looks like maybe it's a bunt. Ooh. Okay, we were just showing the price there. Price, trading... What, $330? Your 12 month price target, $270. We've seen analysts today upgrading their forecast despite the almost exponential rally that we've seen since the summertime. What do you make of what's going on here? Because I know you and you and I have had this conversation many times. You had clients, you got them into it, and they got well and truly chopped around in this one. What are you thinking right now? Yeah, I mean, I look, obviously, extremely volatile name. On the downsides we've talked about, it was never Armageddon-like that maybe some of the, the, the bears and the conspiracy theorists, but I believe the stocks run too much here because I think if they have any hiccup in the next few quarters, it's a stock that's 250. So that's why right now I continue to be more cautious on Tesla. A great rebound, a massive feather in the cap for Fremont and Musk. But right now, it's still some heavy lifting ahead, and I think that's what we need to see. So the bias is to the downside here rather yeah, than the Yeah, I'd be selling side. this sort of rally. Ooh, Dan Ives, great to have you with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you.